Okay, listen up. Six riddles you have to solve to stay alive. Unfortunately, only a few of us know exactly what to do in life-threatening situations. And that's a bummer, because knowing how to react if your parachute doesn't open or a big ferocious dog is about to attack you may save your life one day. That's why we decided to check your instincts and survival skills by putting together a short test to see whether you would stay alive in some dangerous situations. Let's just hope you'll never face them in real life. Here's question number one. There's a big brown bear just ahead of you. What do you do? 1. What kind of question is that? I'd run for my life and scream for help, of course. 2. I'd try to befriend it. Maybe showing that I'm not a danger will convince it not to kill me. 3. I'd play dead and hope it doesn't notice me. 4. I'd shoot it. I ain't messing around. Now you have 15 seconds to think about your answer. And go! Have you already picked the right one? Well, time's up. Let's see how you did. The answer? You definitely wouldn't be able to run fast enough, even if you're a competitive sprinter. A running brown bear can reach speeds of 21 miles per hour. Even the fastest man on Earth, Usain Bolt, clocks out at 23 miles per hour. Which I guess means only he would choose this answer. Now, shooting it also isn't an option, just a last resort. And you better plan on having a powerful gun and good aim. Otherwise, you'll just make the animal even madder. Sorry, hopeful bear whisperer, but talking to this animal and trying to get chummy with it won't do a thing. Do I really need to explain? It's a wild animal. It's going to feel threatened no matter what you do. It doesn't understand language. Okay, I think that's enough reasoning. So, if you decided to play dead, congratulations! You're the one who'd most likely stay alive. Just remember to curl up and put your hands behind your head. This way, the bear won't see you as a threat. By the way, if you said smear honey all over the guy next to you and run like hell, well, we have to admire your creativity at least. But you're not much of a friend. Question 2. You're outside during a tornado, and there's no shelter inside. What's your course of action? 1. I'd get in my car and drive as far away as possible. 2. I'd crouch down in a nearby ditch. 3. I'd climb a tree and wrap my arms around the branch. 4. A tornado, I'd be frozen with fear, standing there mouth ajar. Your 15 seconds start now. Think carefully, and sorry folks, that's all the time you have. The answer. The right thing to do in this situation would actually be to find a stretch of open country, hide in the nearest ditch if you can find one, and cover your head with your clothes. That swirling funnel of death will pick you out of a tree with no effort at all. Believe me, you're not strong enough to hang on to that branch. And getting into your car is a no-no too. Tornadoes throw debris everywhere, so the likelihood that your tornado escaping getaway will be on smooth open road is slim to none. So, how did you do? Tell us in the comment section below. Moving on to the next question. Question 3. Remember that big, ferocious dog I mentioned earlier? Well, it's standing right in front of you, eyes locked on yours. What would you do? Number 1. I'd scare it away with loud noises and arm flailing. Make myself look bigger and scarier, you know? Number 2. I'd stay still, arms pinned to my sides, probably out of fear. 3. Screw this, I'm bolting out of there. I might not be able to outrun Smokey the Bear, but little Scooby-Doo here would be nothing. Number 4. I'd scream for help at the top of my lungs. And 15 seconds on the clock. What in your opinion is the right thing to do? Think it through. Okay, let's find out what the answer is. 
The answer? I know it's easier said than done, but the main thing here is to stay cool, calm, and collected. And don't wet your pants. If you try to run away, scream, or make any sudden movements, the dog will attack you instantly. And yes, they're fast too. So you don't want to take it off anymore. Just stand still with your hands pinned to your sides and do not move. Also, as much as you probably want to monitor this animal's every move, avoid eye contact. This way, there's a chance that everything will turn out in your favor. Question 4. You're swimming in the sea and suddenly realize there's a shark coming right at you. What's the plan? Number 1. Play dead. If it works for bears, it probably works for sharks, too. Number 2. I'd beeline for the shore and pray that I swim faster than it does. Number 3. I'd stare it right in the eye and punch it in the nose if I have to. What can I say? I'm the ultimate badass. Number 4. I'd get around to its back and hang on to its fin. It can't get me if I'm piggybacking it. Now, that's a hardcore situation, isn't it? Here's your 15 seconds. Hmm, so many possible choices. Okay, that's enough. Time's up. Let's see if you were right. The answer. If your badassery would give Clint Eastwood a run for his money, then congrats. Staring at the shark and punching it in the nose is the right way to go here. When a shark attacks, it can swim at almost 6 miles per hour. So your hopes of swimming faster have now officially been killed. Sorry. Piggybacking a shark? Really? Trust me, you're not fast enough to get behind it. And you definitely won't be able to keep a grip on its dorsal fin. These things are fast, seriously. And finally, save your acting skills for the bears. A shark won't miss out on a delicious meal, even if it's not moving. So, did you pick the right answer? If not, don't worry. We have two more questions for you to redeem yourself. Question 5. What should you do if you're skydiving from a plane, you're falling to the ground, you pull your parachute ripcord, and it doesn't open? Number 1. I guess I just try to find the softest place to land, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what else can you do? Number two, I'd curl up to protect my head and torso. This would probably help at least a little bit. Number three, I'd use the reserve parachute, of course. Four, I'd try to cling on to a fellow skydiver. Holy Star Trek, you're a Klingon! 15 seconds on the clock, time starts now. Man, how do you get out of this one? Just accept your fate and meet your maker? Alright, let's see what in the world we should do in this skydiving nightmare. Well, I know what to do because it happened to me four times. The answer, if you pick number three, then you're the survivor. Good for you! The other options are off the table. Falling from such a height even into the softest place and all curled up like a shrimp would still turn out as bad as you can imagine. And clinging to a fellow parachuter won't cut it. By the time you realize your chute hasn't opened when it needed to be, you have under 30 seconds before impact with the ground. Your emergency parachute is there for a reason, so don't forget about it. And yes, in reality, I've had four parachute malfunctions, and using my reserve chute, I survived nearly all of them. Question 6. You're stranded in the desert. What's it gonna be? 1. I'd take off my clothes and try to save as much water as I can. 2. I would not stop walking until I find rescuers or a town or whatever is going to save me. 3. I'd dig out a pit house of some sort and wait for help. 4. I'd only walk at night and sleep in some sort of hiding place during the day. That sun is way too hot for me. Think it through. The clock's ticking down 15 seconds. Have you made up your mind? 3, 2, 1. Time's up.
The answer? The correct option is number 4. So if you picked it, you would most likely survive, unlike all the others who made the wrong choices. You see, at night the temperature in the desert is way lower than during the day. So trying to find the right path during night is the only way for you to survive a couple of days in this harsh environment. No matter how much you try to save your water, you'd still run out of it because in the heat of the desert, you'd feel constant thirst. Walking without stopping will exhaust you faster than you think and definitely wouldn't help since you have no idea where you're going, duh! And waiting for help without doing anything is pointless as well. No dugout would save you from the heat. So, are you a survivor or not? Don't jump, pardon the pun, to conclusions just yet. By the way, don't forget that you can also check your logic skills with our other test. See how much of a Sherlock you are and try to solve the hardest crimes. Anyway, where were we? Oh, right. We're about to put your survival skills to the test once again with a bonus and super hard question that only the smartest ones can answer. Are you ready? Here it goes. Bonus question. A wild tribe of some sort is about to kill you. The leader lets you say your final words. If you tell the truth, they'll burn you at the stake. If you lie, they'll shoot you. How can you outsmart the tribe and survive? You have 30 seconds to solve this one. Your time starts now. Man, this one is really a doozy. It looks like you're pretty much out of luck. And 3, 2, 1. So, do you have an answer or are you completely lost? I'd put myself in the second group, to be honest. The answer, you should say that they will shoot you. This will confuse the tribe because it isn't true. If it were, they should burn you alive, not shoot you. Nor is it false. See the trick here? Well, I don't know about you, but I guess I'm not bright enough to crack these type of riddles. I should probably also get someone else to pack my parachute next time. So, how many of these questions did you get right? Tell us in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and test all your friends and family by sharing this video. There are even more fun videos like this one on our channel. So be sure to join us on the Bright Side of Life.